Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Hans de Goede, and uh, I work for Red Hat. As a software engineer, I mostly work on uh, making laptops work with Linux. That's the best description of what I do. And a part of making laptops work with Linux is uh, making sure you can control the brightness of your LCD panel, which is actually harder than it sounds. It should be really trivial, but unfortunately it's not. So yeah, that's what today's presentation is about. Uh, I missed the memo that we were doing a competition who could do the most slides, but I might win the competition for who has the smallest amount of slides. So it won't be very long. I hope we can have some, some discussion afterwards. We will have plenty of time for questions. So uh, yeah, well, here we go. So uh, as uh, my first uh, the title slide mentioned, uh, the it's, this is about replacing the Sys class backlight user space API. At least that's part of it. Uh, so I will start with a new uh, user space API proposal. But before we can get there, there is a, is a bunch of uh, technical depth we need to, uh, to deal with. Uh, um, a big part of which is also some probe ordering issues, which is always fun stuff for those who have dealt with probe ordering issues in the kernel before. So yeah, that's, that's the topics for today's. Uh, so let's first take a brief look at what, what the problems are. Uh, actually, this is a long unsolved problem. When I started preparing this talk, I was looking back in history and I gave a talk about this before, eight years ago at X Developer Conference in 2014. Then Intel sent a proposal to try and fix this to the mailing list in 2017. And actually at Plumbers Conference in Lissabon, uh, I had a long discussion with Daniel Vetter uh, about this uh, and we sort of made a plan. Uh, and then, then COVID happened and, and other stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's a long, long unsolved problem. So problems with the current user space API is if you look under Sys class backlight, you get a bunch of uh, class devices there. And uh, they have names like ACPI underscore video zero, ACPI underscore video one. And you might have an Intel backlight and an Intel backlight one. And a Nouveau backlight and a Nouveau backlight one. So you get six. And then user, and they're all for the same panel. And user space gets to, to figure out uh, which one works. But also uh, if you actually have multiple panels, which we really don't support yet, at least not in the sense of controlling backlight for them. Then there is also no way to figure out which uh, which of those devices on the Sys class backlight actually belong to, to which panel. Uh, another problem is with using a SysFS interface, it requires root writes. So we have ugly code in, in both GNOME and KDE and XFCE where they have a little set user ID helper which has a pipe. Either it has a pipe which gets values echoed into it or it gets exact every time they want to set a value. Neither of which is really pretty. And we don't like set user ID root helpers. Uh, so, and uh, what's also interesting is the meaning of value in the API is, is not clearly defined. Uh, on, in, on some laptops, if you write zero to the brightness attribute under Sys class backlight and then whatever one you want to use, uh, and then brightness, you will get the screen will turn completely off, or well, the backlight will turn completely off, which with a standard LCD makes it unusable. Uh, in another, another case, is you just get the minimum supported brightness value, which might be so dark that it's not readable in the sun, but usually in a low lit room, it will still be, be readable. And readable enough that you can actually find the slider and slide it up again if you don't have hotkeys on your keyboard. So those are, those are all problems with the current API, which, uh, which we want to get rid of. So uh, there is a pretty trivial proposal actually for, for a new API, which is uh, there will be two new properties added to DRM connector objects. So in uh, the DRM subsystem is strange because it has like the DRI part, direct rendering infrastructure, which is meant for sending commands to GPU, but it also has the KMS part, kernel mode setting, which is about setting up the display pipe. So I'm mostly talking about KMS here to be clear. Even though we call it a DRM object, it's actually kernel mode setting. So in kernel mode setting, each connector, each physical connector in a laptop, including internal connectors, has uh, a, a software object associated with it. And the proposal is to, to set properties on those connector objects. Uh, there will be two. There will be a display brightness property and a display brightness max property. Uh, the reason for having two is that the, the kernel mode setting object model doesn't allow adding properties after an object has been created. Uh, and especially when we also want to be able to control uh, the brightness on external monitors through a protocol called DDCCI, 
which so far is impossible because of the issue that the sysclass backlight interface cannot map clearly to a specific display output. But this will map clearly to a specific display output, so then we can support DDCCI and also do brightness control of external panels. Uh, but that requires um, an external panel can be plugged in later. So at probe time, at creating the, the object, we won't know if there will be brightness control possible. And uh, also we won't know the maximum value. And uh, DRM uh, uh, properties, if they're an integer property, you specify a range at creation time. So what will happen here is that there will be a display brightness property, which gets a range of zero to int max. And the max property, which also gets a range of zero to int max and the actual maximum value, which user space can, can effectively use, will be in the maximum property. And if there is no brightness control, then the max property value will be zero. Uh, so yeah, and it can change on, so the might, uh, brightness max value can just change on hot plug events, which is something new. Uh, currently, it's really interesting. Currently, when, uh, for example, GDM, the graphical login manager, which you get with GNOME, starts up to show you the graphical login prompt, it scans this class backlight, but it does that only once. It assumes that all the backlights have been initialized and that nothing new will ever show up during the runtime of the computer, basically. So yeah, now, uh, but the hot plug events through UDEV are al already a standard component of the, the kernel mode setting interface. This just means that when they get a user space gets a hot plug event and it uses these new properties, uh, it will need to also uh, check if brightness max has changed. So as I mentioned uh, during the brief list of the topics, there is a bunch of technical depth here. This is all very x86 uh, laptop specific. Uh, that's that's what I work on. That's also where, where most of the pain is. In device tree, things are clearly described. We have clear links between like this backlight controller belongs to this display. That's part of the, the, the node tree in, in, the, in device tree. So, but on, on ACPI systems, systems, it's a mess. So uh, yeah, there are uh, m many ways to control uh, the backlight on, on a laptop. Uh, when laptops first started appearing, they were basically using uh, low voltage versions of desktop GPUs or even pre-GPUs, just desktop graphical cards. And these didn't have a PWM controller to set the backlight. So this was done by the embedded controller. So the embedded controller controlled the brightness. And uh, yeah, there was no standardized API to access this. So you have a Dell specific ACPI. I think it's SMB was based on Dell laptops. And Asus has its own stuff, Acer has its own stuff, Lenovo has two different methods, one for ThinkPads, which they inherited from IBM, one from their IDPad line. So if you look at the really older laptops, we're talking pre-Windows XP here, so we're talking pretty old, uh, there is a whole bunch of uh, vendor-specific firmware interfaces. Uh, then XP came along and Microsoft said this is a mess, and they mandated that everyone would implement a new ACPI specification called the ACPI Video Bus. And things were actually pretty good during the XP era. And then Windows uh, 8 happened, or Vista. And the mess started all over again, sort of, because Microsoft said, uh, you know what, we're going to no longer handle the backlight in, in the core of the OS. We're going to move it into the GPU drivers. So Intel started its own thing again, and AMD and Nvidia also did their own thing. Although at the same time, what also happened was that actually the, the, the PWM controller got integrated into the mobile GPUs, so they, it was sort of also logical to do it in the GPU driver because it was actually part of the GPU. So the, the PWM controller, which does, does, does stuff. Um, so yeah, then we, had, uh, we have the, the old vendor-specific ACPI stuff, or firmware-based, could also be SM BIOS or WMI. We have the standardized ACPI stuff, and now we have the native GPU driver stuff. Uh, except the native GPU driver stuff sort of works, doesn't work. If you go to laptops which have two GPUs, an integrated GPU and a separate high, uh, discrete GPU from NVIDIA or AMD. So NVIDIA now is reintroducing uh, using the embedded controller to do <laughs> backlight control. And Apple devices which have uh, two GPUs have something called the Apple GMUX chip. So it's a mux between the two GPUs. So they can both, well, either one at a time can drive the panel. And there the backlight control is part of the mux. So we now we have five different ways of controlling the backlight. And
And on, on some laptops, we see three of these drivers actually saying, oh, I see, because if you, even if you take a pretty recent new Dell laptop, uh, usually the old SM BIOS method is still there, or at least appears to still be there. If you look at the method calls which you can do, the call is there. If it will work, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, the ACPI video uh, call is almost always there in anything which is meant uh, from XP, Windows XP era or newer. And the native GPU support also sometimes gives a false positive that the video BIOS tables, which the GPU driver uses, say, yeah, you can do backlight control, but it's a lie, basically. It's not true. So uh, what we, uh, so currently we just sort of register SysFS devices for all of them. That is not entirely true. And just let user space uh, pick one. User space uh, uses a pretty naive heuristics for this. So the different sort of backlight devices which we can register on x86 they have types there is actually also a type attribute in the sysfs interface and user space just says i prefer firmware which is the acpi one over platform which is the, the custom one over native uh, but this means that if we want to use native on a model we must make sure in the kernel through heuristics that the, so we have two levels of heuristics now although the user space is very fixed in the kernel heuristics, we must make sure that uh, we actually unregister the other ones if we want user space to use the native one. Because if we register any, and, but we don't know if the native one will be there until the native one shows up because the GPU driver module loads. So we start usually with registering ACPI video and then the native driver loads and then on modern hardware we unload ACPI video again. So you may have seen system D errors, especially on dual GPU laptops, that it's trying to access ACPI video to save or restore the backlight, but it cannot, because it sees the, sees the UDEV event that it gets registered. And then by the time it gets to run, we have already unregistered it again, because we say, no, we want to use the native one. So this is all very messy. This is a technical depth which we build up, because we've been adding workarounds on workarounds on workarounds for years. And no one had really had the time to, to clean this up. So currently uh, I'm, I'm making time to clean this up because, well, as I said, for it has been eight years, so it's about time. Uh, so yeah, the probe ordering er issues, uh, the whole story about ACPI video registering first and de only then later seeing the native GPU support show up and think, oh, we prefer that one and then unregistering ACPI video basically is, of course, a probe ordering issue. Uh, this is a problem because if we want to have uh, it as a property on the connector object, we need, really need to have only uh, have the one-on-one -on -one -on -one relationship between uh, the backlight interface which we're using. So either the vendor-specific one, or the generic ACPI one, or the GPU-native one, or some of the other special cases, and uh, the property. Right? We cannot have the property drive multiple backlight interfaces or report the value for multiple backlight interfaces back when the property is being read. So uh, yeah, one of the issues is the kernel heuristics, which we have for this already sort of, cannot detect if the GPU driver uh, will actually offer native control, because for that the GPU driver needs to interpret the, uh, its own video BIOS tables, which are all vendor specific formats in, in the VGA BIOS or the EFI graphical operation process thingy. So yeah, this is... Uh, uh, this is an issue because the heuristics only pick native when it's available. That's sort of how we did. It's not entirely true, but it's more or less how we detect if we want to prefer the native mode. Um, so yeah, to fix this, what, 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 I, what I've done, I already have a patch set for this in review, is uh, I have uh, split the ACPI video probe code. The probe still runs at the same time as it used to do because we don't want to change these kind of things because that tends to cause a lot of regressions. But it doesn't actually register itself as a backlight device yet. That part is skipped, but that's just exposing itself to user space, basically. And then uh, we will have the, the GPU drivers actually call back into the ACPI video code, like I'm done probing. So ask the heuristics which type of backlight should be used, and if that says ACPI video, you can now register. right? Because at that time, the the heuristic code, the, the video detect code as we call it, uh, under drivers ACPI, uh, will know that there is a native driver, so it, it has all the knowledge it needs to make the decision. Uh, this means though that if you s specify no mode set, or if somehow you have an unsupported GPU, uh, the ACPI video backlight will register callback will never get called. 
So to work around that, I have a delayed worker, which runs after eight seconds after HPI video probes. Because sometimes with slow panels, it can take up to five seconds to, 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 to do the whole KMS probe dance. And then we, we, we add some margin of three seconds or whatever. So ACPI video will show up even if you don't load a native GPU driver, but after eight seconds. Which is a very ugly hack before anyone says like, that's so ugly. Yes, it's so ugly. Uh, better solutions are welcome. Uh, so yeah, uh, another issue is, uh, this is already sort of fixed because we need to fix the DDC CI issue anyway, is uh, the heuristics. They look for ACPI video support, for native support, when I still need to add that they look for GMUX support and for the new NVIDIA embedded controller stuff, which luckily has a somewhat standardized interface also. But if they find neither of those four, the heuristics basically return like something else, <laughs> which means the Dell laptop, ThinkPad ACPI, Asus WMI, or whatever driver needs to provide the backlight. But those drivers typically are, are loaded later. Right, for things like being able to unlock your disk in a nice graphical manner, we put the GPU driver in the initRD, but all these other drivers are in drivers platform x86, and we typically don't put those in the initRD, which means that uh, the DRM object will get registered, and the connector object with user space before the backlight is available. So user space will see a panel. If it's quick enough, user space actually isn't quick enough, but let's pretend it's quick enough. Then it would see a panel which doesn't claim to have backlight support and then later all of a sudden the panel will be unchanged but it will get backlight support. But there will be a UDEV event for this and user space will just need to deal with this as if it's a monitor hot plug while at the same time not resetting the mode on the panel because we don't want an actual mode set. So it needs to recognize that it's still the same panel but that's now with backlight support or well brightness control support. Yeah. Uh, the old interface is called Sysclass Backlight. The new interface talks about brightness because nowadays we also have OLED and OLED screens also usually have some sort of brightness curve which you can control. So yeah, sorry I'm using the two uh, intermixed, but for the new interface it will always be brightness, what we're talking about. And so I promised I don't have a lot of sheets, unless I'm mistaken this is the last one. So questions, remarks? Suggestions? Um, so do you mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so do you use a class for this or you in this class and output slash. So the, the new API will use properties on the connector objects, and this is all IOCTOL level. DRM IOCTOLs, you enumerate properties and they have IDs. And yeah, got it, thanks. And actually, well, it's an interesting question because another part of this is that uh, once all of user space is uh, moved over to the new API, which will probably take a long time, but still, or uh, we could disable the user space part of the backlight devices in the kernel. So we will still have the backlight device abstraction in the kernel because we have these five different implementations, but we could basically get rid of sysclass backlight, right? We just stop exposing that to user space. It will all be internal that there is a backlight device abstraction. So we know uh, file in SFS to control the brightness anymore after that? Right. Uh, this will be optional. There will probably be a K-config option, like for distros who know that they only oh. use the new way, they can just nuke the old way. Thanks. Uh, is it possible to discover the max level of the brightness? Uh, I'm asking because uh, I have an old uh, netbook, uh, an Asus one. I don't remember the exact model, but I don't care. Uh, after a certain upgrade, uh, the, the backlight uh, stopped uh, working correctly. I mean that it was either, uh, full on or full off, basically. And I, um, I debugged it and found, I seem to remember that uh, the max value changed from uh, uh, 255 uh, uh, 
to uh, 15 or something like this, and that the number of steps were not correct anymore. I proposed a fix uh, to revert this to the old value, and I was told that uh, more modern uh, laptops uh, were using this range, and uh, that basically we had to make a choice between the old ones or the new ones, and I agreed to keep my patch for myself, and that made me wonder whether it was possible to discover how the hardware works internally to respect the steps. So this sounds like it was using the vendor specific, so the, the, an Asus specific WMI or, or whatever, yeah. ACPI interface. And uh, yeah, with those interfaces, it's usually not possible to discover the maximum. ACPI video has a method for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the native GPU drivers typically have this described in their, bios, uh, in, in, in their video BIOS tables. Actually, usually it's a bigger problem to discover the minimum value. Okay. Because that's actually one thing which I think I missed. I might also have not put it on my slides. So um, yeah, I didn't put this here, but actually this we also had two more back that the meaning of value zero is undefined. For the new uh, API, the meaning of value zero is going to be minimum brightness, right? If you want to turn the display off, there are KMS methods to basically turn the entire connector off, so go in DPMS mode. And zero will be will mean minimum brightness. This is a bit of a problem for the kernel, because if we're just controlling a role PWM as with a native GPU driver, we don't know. Of course, if we set the duty cycle to zero percent, then the backlight goes off. That's clear. And we don't know actually at which value, or if it's 10 percent or whatever, we will get. The video BIOS tables are supposed to give us a minimum value, but they don't always do. So at least the AMD GPU driver just has like a define of if the video BIOS table contains zero, just use this. And Intel will, will need to do the same thing and Nouveau also, so that we can actually guarantee that zero means minimum brightness and that we never turn turn it off in the new when using the new API. The old API will keep the old behavior because some people actually depend on being able to turn off, they should use it as a sort of quick power management hack on embedded devices <laughs> to write zero to sys class Briar. And embedded devices are full of hacks. <laughs> uh, not, not that uh, that x86 machines are much better. Any more questions? Oh, behind you. Uh, yes, I. <coughs> you said that you cannot control the brightness of uh, external devices, external displays. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to know why, and is UAPI going to help with uh, that, or? Or is it going to uh, yes, so uh, external displays typically support something called DDCCI, which is done over the same I2C protocol as which is used to get the, e the EDID, so the display uh, identification information. Uh, at the moment, we, we don't support this. There are some patch out of some. Actually, one of the reasons why I started moving on this was some people were pushing to adding uh, a brightness control to SIS class backlight for external monitors in the upstream kernel, but that that will just confuse the hell out of GNOME and KDE because they don't know that you will have an internal panel and or maybe two external monitors which both are controllable. So yeah, this will solve this because we, we are putting it on the connector object so we can, and each, ex each external monitor mm -hmm. will have its own connector object so then you will know that the brightness property on this connector object controls this display. It will be an interesting question how the UI for this will look in user space, right? Because at the moment on my laptop, right, I have I have this this slider here, which yeah. you don't see that it changes anything, but it changes stuff for me. Or I can can use the hotkeys if I can find them. But um, yeah, that. Are there going to be three sliders, and how does the user know which one is which? Uh, what are the brightness hotkeys going to do? Uh, but yeah, that's, that's all for the user space interface, yeah. user interface designers. Yeah. I can just wave that away as <laughs> not my problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you said your the new API would only work uh, through DRM uh, properties. Uh, can't you have, uh, I don't know, a symlink in the sys backlight directory to point to the correct device and uh, or something that would let uh, apps that are already written for the old uh, API to continue working just by changing the device and not implementing a new, completely new interface? 
uh, yes, we could add something like a sim link to sys class DRM and then card name dash connector name uh, to indicate that this backlight belongs to this connector, assuming we know the mapping ourselves, which is also a bit of a challenge sometimes. Yeah, um, that, that, that's my next question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that would only solve the issue for still for only an internal panel, and then actually it's not useful to know. Because as soon as we add like a separate sys class backlight device with the sim link for an external monitor, then that will still confuse the hell out of existing user space and we don't break existing user space because they don't look at the sim links and all of a sudden they see one extra and they don't know which one to pick for which panel or which output. Yeah, and that was my next question. Uh, will will the mapping be resolved? How will the mapping be resolved? Which to so the, the, this whole a uh, new building which I'm building has a bit unstable foundation. <laughs> so w one of the unstable parts is the, the assumption is uh, there will be only one, else, one laptop panel or internal panel. So, and all the, the APIs I have been talking about are all about the internal panel. So uh, well, if, 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 it's, if the GPU driver is doing it itself, so if we have the native backlight driver case, then, uh, then it's easy because the GPU driver should know which panel it's controlling. And if it's using one of the firmware things, it will just map that to the internal panel. And for the external ones, we know over which connector we're doing the I2C for the DDCCI, so then we no already have the mapping. Right? And the whole DDCCI thing, which is uh, something for the future, right? it's not here yet. The, the code isn't there yet. There, there is a set of patches, but that doesn't fit this model. Um, so uh, uh, there actually the whole idea of course is this will all be, be some DRM helper code where each driver just calls the helper and that's it, right? We're not going to have each driver implement DDCCI by, by itself. That would not be very smart to do. Okay. Oh, yeah, behind you. So if I'm using sysclass backlight and sysclass brightness at the same time, I'm just asking for trouble, or would that work? Uh, no, it will be a one-on-one -on -one mapping, so they will have the same range, except when we enforce the minimum value, then, uh, but then the range will just be shifted, right? So, we w uh, so let's say we, we have uh, a maximum value of 30,000 and we enforce a minimum value of 3,000, then, uh, then we will report a maximum value in the new API of 27,000, and any value written through the new API will get 3,000 added. And if, if then you use the old API and you write a value below 3,000, then you do a read to the new API, it will just re report zero. So it will be a one-on-one -on -one mapping except for that minimum bit, which yeah, we have to fuss. <laughs> so, so you can intermix them and you shouldn't get uh, scaling issues or that, that if you intermix them enough that that's... Sometimes if you do these kinds of things and you add scaling, and you see that the brightness starts walking slowly because it's not a one-on-one -on -one mapping and you get rounding errors and then it starts floating in one or the other direction if there's too much feedback between the two programs who are using the different APIs. So yeah, it will be a one-on-one -on -one mapping, value-wise. I assume that answers your question? Yeah. Great. So, any more questions? Nope. Okay, great. Thank you.